rumor has it, it's a good idea to spray your gaskets with sealant. So I picked up something. Let me go get it. The one that I saw suggested on a YouTube channel was obviously going to be something that I would have to order. And considering I would like to get this done completely today, that's obviously not going to work for me. So I ran over to Napa and I found this Permatex Copper Spray a Gasket High Temp Sealant. I don't think I need it to be high temp based on where it's going to be on the motor, but all the same, it's kind of the best suggestion I could find. So I'm going to take a couple of these hangers I got here. I'm going to hang my gaskets off of them and I'm going to go ahead and spray them up with this stuff. See what happens. I'm not very experienced with aerosol cans for spray paint, so we'll see how well my skills are at this. Not sure how much I was supposed to cover it, but it says uh, copper filler, so I filled it up until it looked like copper. Don't know how smart a move that was, but should probably wear a mask too, but um, yeah. So the gaskets are all sprayed up so far. Um, now it's time, I guess, to try and clean up all the stuff along these to get ready to install the new gaskets, as well as at least get the first uh, rubber and ring installed on here. Um, once I get that going on, then we just start the reinstallation, I guess, at this point. The other thing I'm going to do as I move ahead here is I'm going to rewrap some of these wires with electrical tape just to reseal them and hopefully kind of restore them a little bit. Uh, no idea if I can actually restore them, but at least to cover up some of the issues that they've obviously faced. Uh, they have seen much harder times than they deserve. How about that? So there's going to be a lot of little intricate pieces that I got to work on here. Okay, I'm sure it comes as no surprise to you that the camera's microphone wasn't working yet again since we were shooting with the GoPros and uh, they weren't behaving quite right. I have really liked shooting with the GoPros recently, believe it or not, but yeah, when I plug in my microphone, there is no guarantee that it's going to work or not, and I have no idea why. Uh, I got all the right stuff, everything's pretty much uh, original GoPro type stuff, so technically this should not be failing, and it's failed often. So anyway, here I am doing the extra work as future Tim here. So please bear with me. Uh, let me walk you through what we're working on here. You can see I'm messing with this little weird wire that looks like it's been scorched and it has been more than scorched. Um, but the thing I did notice is that it looks like a wire with a single lead in. There is no ground coming out of it or anything like that. So it seems to be like a signal wire, if you will, and it must ground somewhere else. So because of that, I decided I was going to go ahead and just tape it up as best I could, reinsert it back into uh, the back of the motor where it would be sensing heat. Not sure how exactly it works. It's called a heat trigger on boats.net website. And of course, it's not an available part. This is a part that is not sold anywhere except on eBay. And when I've gone and I've looked on eBay specifically for this part, I cannot find the exact part. So I had to make do with what I had tried to clean it up as best I could, get all the rust off of it as much as I could, clean out the area where it inserts into, and just put it back in. There's one on each side, did the same thing for both sides as best I could, and then there's a blade connector where you connect it back up, and uh, so on and so forth. After that, it was time to go ahead and install the gaskets for the main back of the motor, which is called, I think, the cross, cross, cross cooling cross something i forget but um whatever this v6 motor has it has like a uh, an a figure eight pattern that works its way up and down the motor and that's what cools the system <clears throat> water goes through there and cleans all that stuff out now the final goal of course was to reassemble the thermostats we'll get to that in just a little bit but first we have to uh go ahead and put on the gasket um and completely cover the whole back of the motor uh with this gasket this new gasket uh, after cleaning out all of the stupid plastics that i found inside the motor you can go check out the previous video on that if you're curious to see a little bit more about that so got that all plugged up on both sides but you'll see that as we continue in the video <laughs> If 
you're wondering what's going on here, the moral of the story is take lots of pictures as you're disassembling stuff. I was trying to figure out how to put the starter solenoids or whatever those individual three boxes were back on the side of the motor as they should be on there, and the wires, how they crisscrossed over uh, over themselves, and it was a mess. Uh, trying to remember how to do that exactly was catching me off guard. Thankfully, I had video and pictures from this which helped me be able to do that. So take lots of pictures and make sure you document yourself. That's going to be the key thing here. Also, right now, I'm working on reassembling the thermostat area and get your manual. Uh, I found my manual online. I don't remember what website I did, but look up your specific manual for your boat or your motor that you're working with um, because you will need the information that I had. Um, and that was a pretty important piece of information because the plastics uh, that I'm working on at this very moment in time, uh, I had to figure out how to screw them together when the other plastics were literally melted and dripping into the cooling area of the motor. They were useless, and that's years of wear and tear, and they absolutely just melted useless. So when it comes down to it, get your manual. It's going to be a big help to you. I didn't think it would be when I bought mine. I bought it on a whim just in case, and it has come in handy for more than one uh, key factor here that we'll talk about in future videos. Uh, also, when you buy the thermostat kit for your motor, uh, if you get the same motor, if you have the same motor I have, the um, Evan Rude 150, that's um, from 1987. The thermostat that comes with that kit doesn't quite fit into that top hole. It feels loose and gimpy. Um, I personally still went with it, and I think it did just fine. I think it's sealed up okay, but be warned, you're going to have to decide for yourself. I think I decided to put the rubber gasket behind the thermostat with the metal outside of the thermostat pointing out and then that was compressed uh, back with that final plate that I placed over top, I believe. Um, that was the best I could get it to do. It barely leaks any water, if not leaking any at all. So that's what I ended up doing. Uh, it wasn't the perfect fit, but at the same time, I couldn't find another thermostat system that was a perfect fit. I have the old one right here, and uh, that ring fit perfectly in that hole, and lined up perfectly, the new one didn't. But still made do, and as far as I know, works great. All right, so I'm not gonna lie to you. Um, there's a storm coming in, it's a pretty good one, uh, with a whole bunch of wind. It's uh, not looking very pretty. You might not be able to see very much. But I'll, uh, I'll tell you this, uh, I, I knew it was coming. So I've tied everything down, uh, but uh, everything has kind of been thrown about pretty bad, including the tent. The tent has been blown around really crazy, and there is thunder, which means there is lightning. So believe it or not, I'm going to keep working on this. That shows you this is a Moby Dick situation for me here. I really just want to see this completed, but uh, it might be a little difficult to capture, and I know that the whole goal is for you to see this. If I, if I don't get anything else, I will at least try and film us uh, running and testing this and seeing about how it does. But I don't really have a good way to stand you guys up because I've removed most of the surface that you're hooked to. Like right here, for instance, might work. So I'm gonna try and do my best, but you might not even be able to see very much in this darkness because the sun is like completely gone, gone and it's all clouds and I'm having a hard time seeing stuff too. So you've been fairly warned. Well, let's keep going here and see what happens. I've tied my tent down to the boat, to the cleats of the boat. So hopefully it'll work. And I've also tried to cover up as much of the boat as I can as well. Um, as much uh, as uh, the, the cover for the boat as well. But it's pretty rough. All right, even though this doesn't look completely clean, it is definitely soft to the touch and good to go there. So if I can figure out where on earth my gasket went, I'm going to install install it. It might have flown away. That would be bad. I got to look around for it. This could not be good. Um, it was right here. Okay, I found it. Lucky me. Uh, thankfully, it did not fly away as I figured it may have. By the way, we're starting to really not have a good place to put you, so I'm gonna unplug 
or try and set the microphone a different place, but it might not work. I'm gonna switch it real quick here and see if, uh, there. Anymore, but at least uh, I will try to get whatever I can with this weather. Uh, here's the gasket. I'm gonna go ahead and get right to installing this. We are running out of time super fast. So with the thermostat kit that I got, it came with two screws and I was thoroughly confused why until I took a look inside one of those plastic pieces. Um, it was supposed to be threaded and it was obvious that it was not. And so what I ended up doing was I took the screw that had the serrated edge on the front and I used that and I pre-created a hole uh, using a pair of pliers that I carefully held one that one part in not putting pressure on it i didn't want to bend anything i just wanted to keep it locked in one place because i couldn't do it with with my hand grip uh and so i did that and then i used um, either my screwdriver or my electric screwdriver or my screwdriver and i pre-drilled the hole and then i put in the flathead um the i put in the screw with the flathead on it so that that way I could assemble everything together. So just food for thought, um, if you got two screws with yours and you're going, what the heck? That seems to be the situation. Snikies. Okay, I think we're ready. I cleaned it up and it's pretty soft here. So I think we're about ready to reinstall this with the gasket. So slide the gasket in place. Make sure there's no debris on it because Unfortunately, there is just a small bit of debris. Um, I do not like that this gasket is broken, but oh well. And now we're gonna go ahead and seat this in place. Now I need the spring, which is there. is in and I think is in okay all right let's seal it up and see what happens all right I think we've buttoned up all of it the only thing to do now is to start it but with this rain it's not much fun what a bummer Gonna shut this down for a moment while I think about this. The, the, the audio didn't work. What did you expect me to do? Come on, it's a YouTube video. I'm trying to give views here. I, yeah, it worked. It ran. It ran. It was the first time it's run since installing the new thermostat system. It was doing really well. Had a little tiny leak out of there. I was freaking out about that, and I'll cover that in a second later. But uh, everything's fine. Running is close. Feel the back of it, though. You got any experience with motors? Yeah. With boat motors? So feel the back of this thing. You can feel how hot it is. Yeah, yeah. That's fine. Because I just replaced the, the uh, these guys okay. on here, replaced all the inner workings of that. Because this side was actually felt very cool to the touch, mm -hmm. and that side felt incredibly hot in comparison. Now really? they both feel equally warm. Well, actually, they both feel very hot. So are these thermostats? These must yeah. be a thermostat. Okay. Yeah. So, so then one of them wasn't open. That I don't help. That. Actually, all the all the plastic in it completely melted into a wax and just dripped into the. Uh, yeah, it got too hot. Yeah. yeah. Boat motors seriously run at um, like 160, 180. Because the lakes are so cold, dude. Right, right. And it's a constant flow of it. You never have to like... So your That's boat a good motors point. are always running cold. The other thing is, uh, however this thing oils itself, you know... Um, removed, removed the thing how it oiled itself. Okay. Uh, and I am and, and pre-mixing everything into the gas now. So now it's okay. gas oil mix at a, at a 50 to 1 ratio. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Is that good? Does that work? Yeah. Okay. Because yeah. I'm clueless. I, no, I, that's, that's, that eliminates one of those things 
anything could go wrong. And that's and that's what I was noticing online and what I've heard from other people is that that's the thing that if, if something goes wrong, that's probably it. Because this motor was bogging. And when I took all this apart, all of the lines were old from... This boat's 1987. Mm -hmm. And all the lines still said 1986 on them. Mm -hmm. So I replaced all of those and... Yeah, yeah. And it's always good because... Um over time and once they sit and then you reuse them again they, they start leaking so you yeah know. but they store well they build stuff good then and if you i'm guessing that um whoever ran it didn't have the earmuffs on it so it got hot and smoked through must that's have. right must have because if it because if that gas is sitting in there and there's no uh uh water in the motor itself mm -hmm. the air is so hot it just melts it hmm. That's, that's where you got your wax melting in there. Because when I when I bought it, I took it over to Bob's Marina. The people I bought it from already had an appointment with him, and he checked it out. He said that the gas had the, he tested the gas. He said the gas was good. Uh, he said he redid all the oil in the, that's good. In the crankcase, that's good. and but he said the motor was fine otherwise, except that he saw that it had been run hot. And if you look at the cables, you can tell that they're all burned through one way or another. I mean, look at that right there, mm -hmm. and and it's like you can tell the motor's been run hot and. And he's going, you probably want to replace your VRO, and I don't know what his reason was for that. And basically said, and of course redo all the wiring, you know. And I'm going, well, let me see what I can do first. Yeah, right. Because like... they wanted 600 bucks just to do the VRO. And that's, and I looked online, it's 400 bucks for the part. And I'm going, what's another option? And I called up Launch, uh, yeah. Launch Marine. And they told me you don't need the VRO. Just take it off and put on a fuel pump and run well, your like run. Standalone fuel pump. Huh? Yeah, mm -hmm. just run, just run everything through, just premix. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, all yes. right. And you know, the premix is a great idea. I didn't even think that. Mm -hmm. You know what? When he said it, I nearly threw up. Because <laughs> it's a little, it's kind of obvious. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, we'll go in here and get some dinner. You uh, uh, have any other questions? Just. Uh... Ron, what's your name? John. Nice to meet you, John. I'm Tim. Nice to meet you, Tim. I appreciate it. I appreciate your wisdom, dude. Because. I'm going at this. I've wanted a boat my whole life. All right, thanks, brother. Thank I'm taking it to the lake. That's the deciding factor. It's going. And with that, we're wrapping this video up. I hope that you learned something from it. I hope that it helped you a little bit if you're working on your own motor and dealing with some of the things that I'm dealing with. Um, I don't know what information to give you. I don't do motor repairs, boat repairs um, for any other form except this was my... Uh, project that I just really wanted to fix so that I could go out with my wife and my dog and have a great time uh, on the water. This has been a dream of mine forever. And that's as simple as it gets. Um, I, and when it comes to the repairs, they have not been that simple at all. So will it work? We'll find out in the next video, hopefully. We'll see if we can take this out to the lake and give it another run. And uh, when it comes down to it, I want to thank you so much for watching my build series on my Larson 1987 vintage, it doesn't look that vintage, but vintage boat, believe it or not. Hey, it still has a cassette player in it, all right? That's, that's, yeah, it's that old. I used to love cassettes. I don't have any anymore. So we got to replace the radio. Hey, if you're enjoying the build series, please hit the like button, uh, subscribe, leave a comment down below, uh, and let me know that you want to see more because there's plenty of things to do the, to, to do to this boat in the long run. Um, it's something that I really want to work on and continue to keep built up and continue to keep running if it works. We're going to find out in the next video, hopefully. Thank you so much for watching. God bless you guys. Big thank you to Lucas Music Official for being our one patron on Patreon. If you enjoy these videos, videos and you want to go that extra mile, be a Lucas and uh, consider donating a dollar or a video. That would mean the world to us. You can set your limits so that you don't donate more than one uh, dollar uh, a month even. And when it comes down to it, uh, you will receive early releases of all of our videos. So any videos that we have made, we make videos sometimes weeks ahead, sometimes months ahead of when they're going to release. And the first thing that we do is release them to you guys, our patrons. So big thank you to Lucas Music Official, our one patron that we have right now this guy has been uh at our back the whole time been a great guy we appreciate him very much he also does some great music over on his channel lucas music official look him up all right thank you <laughs> luke him up there you go god bless you guys we'll see you next time right here on legacy studio and the larson build series see ya